Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. DERATE is understanding the principles and design considerations. In this video course, you will learn why DERATE is required for boiler, the operating principles, the design considerations and construction features. Please subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you will motivate us to produce knowledgeable video content for you. So subscribe now before you forget. Deaerator is an important equipment in boiler system in process industries and several other industries including power plant. Corrosion of condensate in boiler tubes is a major concern in the above industries. While corrosion is a general topic that will be covered separately later, this discussion focuses on corrosion by dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide in condensate and boiler and the removal by mechanical means. Oxygen in the condensate sets up corrosion cell. The iron from the condensate pipe and steam system dissolves by the above corrosion cell formation. The corrosion reaction and metal dissolution in water is explained by the two reactions below. The first reaction forms a Ferrex hydroxide protective layer on the metal surface. Iron plus 2H2O giving rise to FeOH twice plus H2. The dissolved oxygen water then reacts with the ferrous hydroxide protective layer and forms insoluble deposit called rust. For FeOH twice plus O2 plus H2O giving rise to 4FeOH thrice. Similar effect is possible from the presence of carbon dioxide in the steam system. When the steam containing CO2 starts to contents, in the heat transfer equipment, the seawater dissolves the condensate forming carbonic acid. 2H2O plus 2CO2 giving rise to 2HCO3 plus H2. The carbonic acid is a weak acid and dissolves iron from the condensate pipes and vessels. Effect of corrosion products. Having understood how dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide in condensate system and make up boiler fuel water causes corrosion, let us move on to find out how it impacts the boiler tubes. This corrosion attack by dissolved cases is identified by the pitting of the metal surfaces in the piping system and boiler tubes. The iron dissolved from the condensate piping when reaches a boiler can deposit in the high heat flux areas in the boiler that is the tubes. The deposit acts as an insulation layer on the tube surface minimizing heat transfer that leads to excessive surface temperature. As the deposit layer goes in size, the heat transfer is reduced significantly and the overheated tube fails by rupture. No plant operating personnel want to see this happen. It has huge cost impact on boiler maintenance and plant operation and capacity utilization. You know the effect, but how to remove the dissolved gases? Prevention is better than cure. There are mechanical and chemical means to reduce a corrosion attack by dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide. Chemical means will be covered separately. This video focuses on the mechanical means, that is, by deaeration. What is deaeration? Deaeration is the removal of dissolved gases such as oxygen and CO2 from the condensate and boiler feed water before it is fed or returned to the boiler. Deaeration is based on two principles. The first principle is the Henry's law that states that 
gas solubility in a solution decreases as the gas partial pressure decreases. The second principle is that the gas solubility in a solution decreases as the temperature increases and as it approaches the saturation temperature, that is the boiling point. How do you apply these principles in the deaerator to remove the dissolved gases? The deaerator applies this principle by use of steam and also use stripping to remove and release the dissolved gases to atmosphere through the vent in the deaerator. Shown in the figure below is the design and construction features of deaerator system. The deaerator system consists of a deaerator and a holding tank located just below the deaerator. The removal of dissolved gases takes place in the deaerator which consists of several rows of perforated trees fitted inside. Steam is admitted to the deaerator at the bottom and the condensate return from the steam system and the fresh boiler feed water enters the top of the deaerator and is distributed over the trees by spray nozzles. Thus, the water and steam flow counter current to each other. The falling condensate and boiler feed water comes into contact with the outflowing steam on the trees and gets heated up to the saturation temperature. The deaerator is maintained at atmospheric pressure by a vent nozzle which is open to atmosphere. Hence, the water is heated to the saturation temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. A small quantity of steam is allowed to vent to atmosphere. This ensures the condensate and the boil of feed water approach the saturation temperature. As explained in the principle earlier, the steam reduces the partial pressure of CO2 and oxygen in the system and raises the temperature to the saturation temperature. The net effect is the reduction of gas solubility in water and hence lower residual gas concentration in the boiler feed water to the boiler. The counterflow arrangement of water and steam ensures good removal efficiency. What should be the dissolved oxygen content in the feed water to boiler? ASME provides the standard for the condensate and boiler feed water quality to boiler in terms of boiler pressure. The following table provides the recommended dissolved oxygen content in the feed water to boiler versus steam pressure. For boiler pressure up to 450 psig, the recommended dissolved oxygen should be less than 0 0.04 ppm, that is 40 ppb. For boiler pressures greater than 450 psig, the recommended value is 0 0.007 ppm, that is 7 parts per billion. Deaerator design aspects. Three important design parameters in the deaerator are pressure in the deaerator, turbulence, and sufficient residence time, and steam requirement. Pressure in the deaerator. Operative pressure of the deaerator depends on the amount of gases to be removed. For very low level of oxygen concentration, low pressure slightly above atmospheric pressure in the range of 0.2 to 0.5 bar g is preferred. Turbulence and residence time. Turbulence helps in breaking the surface tension of water and aids in release of the gases. The residence time must be sufficient enough to ship the gases of water. Perforated tray section provides a turbulence as the steam passes up through the perforations. The number of trays is selected so as to give sufficient resistance time. Steam requirement. The quantity of steam required depends on the ratio of the boiler feed water makeup and the condensate return. Higher the boiler feed water makeup, larger the quantity of steam needed. As explained before, the steam is needed to heat the condensate plus make a water to the saturation temperature in the deaerated vessel. In addition, small quantity of steam is required to physically strip the gases and release them to atmosphere through the vent. Most of the steam admitted to the deaerator condenses on the trees. 
a small fraction of steam is lost with the dissolved gases in the vent. Steam requirement can be obtained by making a steam balance by specifying the condensate and make up water temperature and ratio of make up water to condensate return. If the deaerator system receives a return condensate at high pressure, then it will generate some quantity of flash steam. The flash steam generator should be subtracted and the steam that is lost with non condensables in the vent should be added. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you. With this we have come to the end of the presentation. Please give your comments if any about this course after you finished viewing this video. Share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professional students. Thank you for watching.